Lesson 5-7, graphing inequalities in the coordinate plane. All right, first of all, let's graph the solutions to x is greater than 5 on a number line. All right, number line 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, we want all the x's that are greater than 5. So that would be 6, 7, and all the fractions in between, and a little bit bigger than 5, but not including 5. So, you know, you could get very, very, very close to 5, you know, 5 and 1, 1 millionth, but not including 5. So we put an open circle on the 5, and we shade everything to the right. Now you learned this back in elementary school, and definitely in your pre-algebra class. But that's just a number line. That's not the coordinate plane. What does this look like in the coordinate plane? Well, when we move to the coordinate plane, we move into the second dimension. We have length and width here, so it's the second dimension. And we want all the x's in the world, regardless of what the y's are, we want all the x's in the world that are larger than 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay and there's 6 and so on and so on. Doesn't include the 5. Okay, hmm. The line x equals 5, x equals 5 is a vertical line, okay? But we don't want that line. We can't include all the points on that particular boundary line. So the way we show that it includes everything right up to that vertical line, but not the vertical line itself, is to use a dotted boundary line. Whereas here we had the open circle, here we have a dotted boundary line. Now we need to decide, are we going to shade on the right of this or on the left? Every line cuts the plane into two parts. Those are called half planes. And the line itself is referred to as a boundary line. So do we want the right half plane or the left half plane? Well, all we have to do is pick a point. Lots of times we pick 0, 0 because it's a very, very easy point to work with. Okay, is this point, if I put an x of 0 in here, into the little inequality, is 0 greater than 5? No, it is not. So this half plane is not shaded. Now, let's pick another point. Let's say we're over here at the point 7, 0. Is 7 greater than 5? Yes. So this is the half plane that would get shaded. Example 2. Graph the linear inequality y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 4. All right. We're going to think of this as though it said y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 4, and we'll, we'll graph our boundary line. And in this case, it's going to be a solid boundary line because it's not strictly less than. It's less than or equal to. And then we'll decide whether we shade above that diagonal line or below. All right, graphing here as though it were an equation. It's already in slope-intercept form. The y-intercept is at 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, we've got our starting point there. And then we have a slope of negative 2 thirds, which means down 2 over 3. Down 2 over 3. Down 2 over 3. All right, so there we have it. We go ahead and we now draw the boundary line. There's the boundary line, it is solid because we have the equal to symbol there, less than or equal to. And now we've got to decide which half plane do we shade, above or below. So 0, 0 is not on the boundary line itself, so we'll use it as a test point. If I plug in 0, 0 up in here for x and y, will I get a true statement? Is 0 less than or equal to negative 2 thirds times 0 is 0 plus 4. Is 0 less than 4? Yes, it is. So we would be shading below the boundary line. Example 3. Mike drives the Indiana Tulick ferry boat. He transports cars and buses. 
His ferry has room for only 12 cars, and buses take up the space of three cars. We want you to draw a graph of all the possible combinations of buses and cars on Mike's ferry. Now assuming that the ferry is completely full, there are only five ways that this can happen. All right. Let's assume there are no buses whatsoever. Then there would be 12 cars. Again, we're assuming that the ferry is full. All right, if we put one bus on, that's going to take up three spaces, and then there's only nine spaces for cars. If we put two buses on, that's going to take up six spots, and then there's only um, enough room for six cars. If we put three buses on, that is nine spaces taken up, and there are only three cars that would fit. And let's see here. If we put on four buses, doggone it, there won't be any space left at all for any cars whatsoever. So one, two, three, four, five. There's only five ways this can happen to fill up that fare. All right, buses and cars cannot be negative. So we're going to be in the first quadrant. Um, let's go ahead and see where these points would be. Let's go ahead. All right, if we have one bus, no, if we have zero buses, we're going to have 12 cars that will fit. So at zero buses, we're up here, right there. At one bus, there are only nine cars that will fit. And at two buses, there are only six cars that will fit. Three buses means three cars. And four buses means absolutely no cars. So you can see we do have a linear equation here straight line. They all fall on a straight line. And the answer is, um, you know, what other po other possibilities are possible? Well, we can't connect these, all right, because quite frankly, you know, you can't have a fraction of a car or a fraction of a bus. So the answers to this inequality are just going to be the other stuff here that falls underneath here. Because you could have, you know, you could have one bus and no cars, that would fit on the ferry, or one bus and one car. All right, any of these dots underneath this boundary line here. In fact, let me go ahead and put the boundary line in, even though we can't have the fractions. Everything underneath that line here, all these lattice points underneath here, would fit on the ferry. Okay. You could have these cars. You could have 11 cars, 10 cars, 9 cars, 8 cars, uh, 6 cars and 1 bus, 4 cars and 1 bus, 3 cars and 1 bus. You know, all of these will fit. These are called lattice points. But we cannot shade this in. We can only put the lattice points in because you can't have any fractions. So there is a picture of the answer to Mike's Indiana Tulick ferry boat problem.